Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming today. I'm Andrea from St. Mark's Hospital and um, we are here today with people from Salt Lake County. Our speaker today is Laura Jones and I'll let her give you a little bit more uh, information about herself as she gets started. Our topic today is trail running uh, 101. Um, Sadie will be putting in the chat during the program today the link for your healthy lifestyle points. If you have questions during the course of Laura's presentation, uh, go ahead and put them in the chat and I will keep an eye on those. And if they are on topic, I will um, ask Laura those questions right then. Otherwise, I'll save them till the end. So, Laura, go ahead and get started. All right, as always, thank you very much for having me and letting me uh, teach you. Laura, we can't hear you. Oh. I'm not sure why. Can you hear me? Hear me now? Hi, hi, Laura. This is Holly. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Actually, you just got a lot softer. Don't know what you did. I'll switch back. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I usually check that and it's not usually a problem. All right. Well, anyway, uh, thank you for having me and let me share um, my passion for preventative medicine and for um, exercise and we are going to talk about trail running today. Um, my experience with trail running um, was um, really as I was preparing for a triathlon, I was um, doing some events to kind of practice for that. And one of the events were was held up in Heber Valley. And um, I had no idea at the time that the running portion was going to be on trails. So that's kind of um, a little bit of a, my very first experience. Um, so this presentation really is based off of my own experiences in trail running and also um, the latest research um, on um, techniques and, and information on that as well. Um, I do ha um, have a master's degree. I am a registered nurse and have been a registered nurse for about 30 years. Um, I've been teaching full time for about five years and I'm currently um, a member of the nursing faculty at Weber State. So that's a little bit about me. All right, here's my disclaimer. Um, this is intended for educational purposes and does not replace uh, physician and sports professional assessment, and I have no conflict of interest. All right, we're gonna talk about the benefits of trail running. We're gonna review some basics and how to prepare. Uh, we're gonna talk about running form and how to avoid injury, and then review some tips and resources. So what exactly is trail, run, trail running? Really, it is running off-road. It can include dirt paths, uh, grass, uh, natural obstacles, uh, perhaps some rugged terrain, um, includes rocks and stumps. And really, it, it occurs in a natural wilderness environment. Uh, you get to run in the heart of nature, uh, perhaps the fresh air, the mountains, and really surrounded by great scenery. Most trails will involve an elevation gain, um, and there have been some studies um, that reviewed why people chose to run on trails versus running on the road. Um, and the research indicated that 72% uh, of the participants uh, ran on trails for a better quality of life. 68% did it for leisure and 36% did it uh, in regards to a competition. Uh, many indicated that they were addicted from the very first time that they um, ran. Um, all right, let's talk about some of the benefits. So some of the health benefits, um, just like running on the road, um, it definitely increases your metabolism. 
it improves your memory and it does that because your heart pumps and functions and um, increases the amount of oxygen that is going to your um, brain and so thereby it improves your memory and um, at the very bottom it talks about um, reducing your chance of dementia trail running uh, lengthens the lifespan by impacting or eliminating issues with cholesterol uh, with blood pressure it decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease by 45 percent uh, it uh, decreases your risk of certain types of cancer um, type 2 diabetes and stroke and I already mentioned um, your risk of dementia. Trail running really improves mental health due to the endorphins that is released. Uh, research shows that 78% uh, of people choose to run on trails for the mental health benefits. Um, trail running really clears your mind, uh, gives you a positive outlook, uh, makes uh, runners feel more joyful. Trail runners sleep better, they feel more energized and live life to the fullest. Trail running um, will decrease your stress and improve your coping still, skills. And research has identified that trail runners are actually more resilient and have more perseverance than, um, than an average road runner and definitely over um, those that don't have physical activity. Um, and it's really because runners, uh, trail runners are exposed to stressful conditions. The um, inherent intensity and challenging nature of the experience makes that resiliency and perseverance a natural result. Uh, trail running also strengthens self-identity and self-confidence. Um, runners gain empowerment, uh, the ability to be brave and tenacious. What I find interesting is that trail runners have shown that they, uh, through the research, that they transfer the mental health benefits and skills into their everyday lives, um, which means better well being and potentially success in your career pathway. There is an abundance of evidence that details added physical and psychosocial benefits when exercise is completed in nature. It's well known that outdoor environments are more therapeutic than indoor environments due to the contact with natural elements like daylight and fresh air. Um, and that's exactly where you are going to be with trail running. There's a bit of a synergistic benefit to exercising and being exposed to nature which results in a greater benefit than either by itself. Um, specifically, it, it deactivates your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight system, uh, so that you're not getting that um, release of adrenaline and noradrenaline levels, which ultimately thereby strengthens your immune system, it creates like calmness. Um, health benefits start immediately and increase during the activity and will last up to a week following the activity. Exercising in nature um, has a natural pick-me-up effect, which means that even though your effort is high, uh, your perception of how hard you're working is actually low. And then finally, those who exercise in nature are more likely to meet the recommended activity levels and more likely to repeat the activity. Studies uh, show that trail runners really connect with nature and receive these natural benefits and more. The other thing that you can derive from trail running is the socialization piece. Uh, trail running is a great social activity uh, you can do with others, but if you prefer, the research has also indicated that unlike other forms of exercise, trail running also provides spiritual benefits, um, benefits like solace, uh, peace, and a connection with a higher power. I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between trail running versus road running. Uh, trail running really has uh, naturally has a softer surface when compared to road running. 
the the benefit of this is that there's less of a jarring impact on the muscles and joints uh, compared to pavement. Um, moving, running to the trail is is more challenging, but provides some freedom from pollution and traffic. And trail running really provides you with a whole body workout and improves your body's balance and coordination. Uh, this is because of the inconsistencies in the train that you just don't find on the road. The, the variability of the train will engage a different variety of muscles and is really great for the core, which makes you a more balanced and athletic runner. Another benefit to trail running is that when compared to road running, trails are less repetitive uh, due to the variable train. So the risk for repetitive stress injuries are very low. Um, and many road runners deal with that repetitive um, injury because of that um, ongoing um, hitting the pavement, so to speak. And then finally, trail running burns more calories. According to research, trail running burns about 10% more calories than road running. It may not seem like much, but it, it does add up. Uh, so why don't trail road runners try trail running? Um, a lot of runners are afraid of trail running uh, because it, they're unsure of what it takes. They're worried about um, falling or twisting their ankle or perhaps getting lost. So really being prepared and aware of the techniques uh, go a long way. Um, and the, really the longer you do it, the less risk there is. All right, let's talk about some basics. First, we're gonna talk about shoes. If you're gonna um, start with trail running, I actually recommend just starting with regular running shoes um, on short trails. If you end up like uh, liking trail running or enjoy it, then you can consider purchasing trail running shoes. Uh, trail shoes are different uh, because they are more protective. Uh, they have a better heel support. Uh, they actually are lower to the ground than regular running shoes, uh, which actually helps decrease your risk of ankle sprains. Uh, they're, they're designed to, be, uh, to have more rugged treads that offer more traction. And there's actually three different types. There's, there's light, midweight and heavy. Light is kind of meant for shorter uphill runs. Midweight is used for longer runs that, you know, have some variability with terrain. And then the heavy is more for maybe rocky, ever-changing terrain. So um, if you're going to do a variety, um, then I would choose the midweight. Otherwise, you kind of select your shoe based on where you're going to be doing most of your trail runs. Uh, socks should be lightweight and seamless so that you can kind of avoid blisters. Some other essentials, um, you really as a beginner, you don't need to spend a lot of money on trail running clothes and accessories. Start with the shoes and accumulate as you go. Um, clothing, really, you can wear the same kind of clothing as you would on the road. Uh, moisture wicking on the top, you want to avoid cotton tops because they really chafe. And then spandex on the bottom uh, will always reduce um, that risk for chafing. In regards to trail running, I encourage you to dress in layers because with a, you know, and have a waterproof jacket because depending on the weather and where you're going, you never know what the weather will do. Um, and you can always take off layers, but you don't wanna get cold um, and wet. That will make your run miserable. And then also a hat to shield from the sun and help with glare. Some toiletries um, I recommend is sunscreen, some lip balm um, and insect repellent, depending again, where you're going. Um, because the there is a higher risk for um, abrasions and ankle sprains, I recommend carrying a first aid kit um, just with some basic um, bandages and ointment and um, medications for like allergies and like a ibuprofen or a Tylenol. Um, and then optional is a running hydration pack or a running backpack. Some of them are called running Bess. Really that will carry everything that you need. Um, and holding water bottles is really difficult. 
and the backpack is the solution because it holds all of your fluids. Another optional item is a GPS watch. Um, if you like to measure maybe elevation or distance, um, it also can help you get home if you get lost. And uh, But some trail users actually choose not to wear a GPS watch at all and just run for the pleasure. And really this is one of the freeing things about trail running um, because you can set aside your worries about pace and time and just go out and enjoy. If you're, if you end up doing a trail run, like in a remote location, um, I always would recommend taking um, water treatment tablets or an emergency shelter or more supplies for more serious injuries because you're just going to be um, further away. To get started trail running, pick out a trail that really picking out a trail is going to make it or break it. There's two types of trails. There's non-technical trails, which are just gravel or dirt roads. And then there's the technical trails, which are narrow um, trails that typically are dirt or gravel. Some of them may be rocky. Um, they have uh, what they call them single track, um, which means they're about two to three feet wide. There are double track um, trails and it's typically those were made from like old roads or, um, you know, vehicles going down. So it creates two tracks down the, um, down the trails. So this uh, picture is an example of just a non-technical trail. That's just an old road that's made of gravel. And really the easiest way to start trail running is to pick an area you already know. Um, like a local hiking trail, a, a reserve, a park. Um, maybe there's a local network of gravel roads and dirt trails. Some are, some are really close to home. Um, start on easy, short, and relatively flat trail. Uh, I recommend choosing a trail in a park or a popular place with well-marked paths and facilities. And really by running somewhere that it's easy to get around and not too challenging, that allows you to focus on the act of trail running rather than worrying about where you are and what direction to go. As you gain more confidence and get more experience, you'll, you'll want to naturally branch off to other places that maybe are longer or um, higher in the mountains or have some uh, variability in terrain. Um, I do recommend that you do your research on trail difficulty. Um, we'll talk about how to find trails um, a little bit later. When you're new to trail running, it really helps to have other people, particularly those if that have experience to kind of support and guide you on your first few runs, or when maybe you're running on a new trail that you're unfamiliar with. When you run with others, it it forces you to be accountable to someone else and it forces you to commit. Um, so you're more likely to do it. It also provides you some company and ultimately it's safer um, than running alone. I don't recommend those who have had experience in running to go out and try out technical trails as a beginner if you've never run before. If you've never run, really start on that gravel road or paved trail first, so you can kind of get that experience. Then you can advance to the to the single track or the technical trails. Those who have significant running experience, you can go ahead and hit the technical trails first, but know that trail running has a learning curve. Uh, in in more way in many ways, trail running is more difficult than road running. But with that being said, trail running can be as easy or as hard as you want to make it. Uh, normally, road runners uh, derive motivation from the desire to improve speed and pace. And one of the great things about trail running is it's not about speed or pace um, at all. And it can be a huge adjustment compared to road running. But like I mentioned earlier, it can be very liberating as well. Um, it's important when trail running um, to think time instead of mileage. Um, so you're running in terms of the amount of time you're comfortable running, not necessarily distance. Uh, so one of the reasons is so that you don't, um, you know, 
take on a run that's beyond your capabilities. Um, many trail runners run by effort level, meaning running by how hard it feels. It's important to focus on the terrain instead of focusing on getting to your destination quickly um, and really trying to enjoy the route and the scenery. Uh, because of the, uh, because road running, um, those that have run on the road have this mentality of speed and pace. A lot of times road runners will ask what a good trail running pace is, and that's a very difficult question to answer because it really depends on, uh, factors such as the, the terrain and elevation gain. Uh, and like I mentioned, it's not about speed and speed and pace, uh, if you compare trail running to road running, then on average, the trail runs are 10 to 20% slower pace than on paved roads. For example, if a five mile run takes you um, about 50 minutes, the same distance on a trail takes about an hour. So really this is the exact reason why it's important to throw out speed and pace you're going to be challenged more so than you are on the road. It's just different. So you need to change that, that mindset. All right. Um, make sure that you drink and eat before your run um, and during your run and after your run. The, the amount is really based on the duration. So if you're going to go on a run for, that's going to be under 60 minutes, really water is all that you need. The water guideline is that you should drink um, about 15 to 20 ounces per hour of running, um, and that will increase if it's um, a really hot day. If you are spending more than an hour on your run, electrolytes are really important. Um, and electrolytes are found in, you can, it comes in powders, you can choose like a, a Gatorade or a Powerade. Um, they have um, something called liquid IV that has those kinds of electrolytes in them. And the reason that's really important, especially for trail running, is that um, your these minerals actually re regulate the muscle function. So if you're really challenging your muscles, um, you're going to deplete those minerals if you're not replacing them and which can lead to, you know, some pretty painful muscle cramping. So that's the reason behind the importance of electrolytes. So less than an hour, you're good with water, more than an hour, you need to, to include um, electrolytes, about a 50-50% balance. Um, having food or maybe some energy gels um, are great to have if you're doing more than two hours. Um, and when you're, when you're running, um, make sure that you take more food and take more water than you think you're going to need, because you, again, never know what to, what you're going to come across. It may be hotter than you think it can take longer than you expect. And you just don't want to be left out, um, because you're away from, from, um, you know, civilization, so to speak. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's hard to carry water. Uh, so this picture shows that hydration pack or the, the running backpack is sometimes called a running vest that I recommend because it carries the water um, or the fluids that you need. And it also will carry like, you know, your keys and your, your uh, cell phone and, and, you know, a snack and what have you. So it really will carry everything that you need. All right, let's talk about safety. Trails by their um, very nature are remote. So getting help if you get injured or lost is really a, a challenge. So here's some things that you should kind of be aware of to help keep you safe and mitigate the those kinds of issues. Make sure that you um, look at your intended route and you look at the weather. Um, I recommend keeping your runs to marked trails. If you're running on mountainous routes, um, make sure you take a map with you. Uh, you can have your map on your smartphone. 
but if you're going to do that, you need to download the map first because service may not be available. If you are relying on your phone, it should be fully charged and put on airplane mode to kind of preserve that battery. Um, if you're comfortable with technology, you can actually load the route um, turn by turn directions um, to your phone or a GPS watch. Um, or throw out the phone and don't worry about it and just take a physical map. It really depends on what kind of trails that you're choosing. Um, if you're by yourself, make sure that you let someone know where you're going and when you're going to be back. We have heard many times on the news of people, um, you know, not showing back up. And so that is the big one for safety is knowing where exactly to look for you um, and when to look for you. Uh, alternatively, you can also uh, leave a note in your car at the trailhead that describes the route you intend to run. But not only let someone know, but also make sure that you're identifiable. Make sure you have your photo ID on you and an emergency contact number. There's always safety in numbers. So running with a friend gives you company and support uh, just in case you get injured. So definitely consider running with others. Make sure you stay aware. Um, this is a big safety issue. So we don't want you to put on headphones or earbuds in. If you, you really insist on having music, just use one earbud rather than two so you can keep your ears on your surroundings. One of those, one of the reasons why that's important is because you need to be aware when you're in the atmosphere with wildlife and we share trails with multiple different, uh, you know, horses, um, hikers, um, mountain bikers. And so you need to have some awareness of who's around you um, as well. Um, it's important not to disturb the wildlife. Um, and really that's for your safety. Um, you don't want to scare the animals with sudden movements or loud noises. So if you come across an animal, just make sure that you give them room and time to kind of adjust to you. Uh, if you can pass them on the trail, go ahead. If you can't, just backtrack and take a break until they move on. As I mentioned, you are sharing the trails with hikers and mountain bikers and horses. So be friendly and positive. Um, that's kind of etiquette of the trail. Um, smile, uh, say a few short friendly words, be happy about being able to share the great outdoors with other people. Um, you do wanna be conscientious of other trail users. If you are um, coming upon someone who's perhaps hiking and you're you know, going to come, um, you don't wanna scare them and so, before you get upon them, make sure that you kind of loudly call out um, passing on your left or passing on your right so that you don't startle them and that they know that you're there. If um, there's someone behind you and it's kind of those narrow single tracks I mentioned, you can move off to the side um, to allow them to pass. The, the general rule is if uh, trail users are going uphill. It doesn't matter whether it's a mountain bike or a, um, a hiker or um, equestrian, then they really have the right of way. And it doesn't matter where horses are, they have the right of way period. Um, mountain bikers are actually supposed to give way to pedestrians, but especially when, if they're traveling downhill, it's easier as a trail runner to kind of quickly step out of the way and let them go back, uh, go past you rather than assuming or expecting them to stop. Make sure that you're not blasting music, hence why I mentioned the one earbud, uh, like I mentioned earlier. And then finally, leave no trace. Many of you are familiar with these concepts, but for trail running specifically, it's important to remove all your trash. That includes like apple cores and banana skins. Um, don't leave those out. It's actually detrimental to little creatures. Um, and so carry those out with you. If you um, on the trail need to do a number two bathroom stop, 
the rule is that you're supposed to bury it and you don't leave paper behind. It's always a good idea if you're going on longer trail to bring along a Ziploc bag with um, toilet paper in it and then pack out the toilet paper when you're done. Um, and then stay on the trail. Don't be attempt tempted to to do shortcut those switchbacks. It's you know causes that trail to to erode and damages the the na natural vegetation. If you want to leave the running trail nicer than you found it, there's something called uh, plogging, which is means carrying a bag and picking up trash when you're when you're jogging. All right, let's talk about some important factors to get you started. Um, running form. For those that are not familiar to running, there's some important things you need to know about running form because for non-technical trails, that you use the same form as you would on a regular pavement. Um, so the non-technical trails are those that are flat or made from gravel. Um, in regards to your upper body, it's important when you're running that your posture is straight. You don't want to lean forward or backwards. Um, your shoulders should be relaxed. It shouldn't be tense up here by your neck. Um, if you if you tense up your shoulders or round your shoulders, it's actually going to tilt you forward, will restrict your breathing, um, and you're going to tire out quickly. So stand erect. Your chin should be parallel to the ground, and your focus should be about 10 or 20 feet ahead. If you stare at your feet, it's going to make you slump and do the same thing that I just mentioned. Um, hands should be at waist level, your arms and hands relaxed. It's important not to clench your fists when you're running, okay? Just cup them gently, um, like you're kind of holding on to an egg. Your arms shouldn't cross, so you shouldn't cross like this um, when you're running. Um, it can actually lead to like neck and shoulder stiffness if you're crossing like that. So think, I don't want to be like a T-Rex, okay? And you don't want to do this like boxing movement. It's really inefficient. So hands at the waist level um, and then hands relaxed. Your feet should be pointed straight. If you point your toes out, it can result in injury. So straight, to straight feet. And you should actually land in the middle of your foot. Um, if you land on your toes, it tightens your calf and you're going to fatigue easier. If you land on your heel, um, then you have what's called a break effect from your heel strike. So it's almost like you're stopping your forward momentum. Uh, so again, feet straight, landing on the middle of your foot. Uh, you do want to have kind of a quick stride turnover. You want to take short, light steps rather than super long, harder steps. Um, a lot of times if you're trying to stretch out your stride, you're going to lift yourself up off of the ground. And so as your foot comes back, the impact on your legs are actually going to um, be greater than the shorter, lighter steps, uh, which can lead to injury and fatigue. On technical trails, you actually need to adjust your running form slightly. So posture and arms are really the same as regular running, but your focus and lower body should kind of adjust. You actually should slow down. Uh, remember, we're trying to get over, trying to get from point A to point B really quickly. Uh, so slow down and kind of practice. It will really help avoid those falls. For, for trail running in general, think about two things quick feet and high knees. Um, and, and that's easy way to kind of reduce that accidental kick of the root or the rock. So focus on what you're doing. Look at the train, uh, plan where your feet are going to land and kind of think about how quickly you're going to make your steps. It's kind of like um, driving a car. You're not concentrating on every little thing in front of you, but you're kind of paying attention to the larger picture. So just keep kind of scanning the trail. Um, another technique is keeping your distance from other runners. You wanna keep about 10 feet apart uh, so that you can better see the ground. And uh, for potential, kind of keep an eye out for potential hazards that are loose. 
such as loose rocks or loose sticks that might move when you step on them. Um, it's important when you're trail running not to lengthen your stride. I mentioned that earlier. Um, instead of trying to lengthen it to get over something, actually take two shorter steps um, before. So, and that will really help uh, mitigate that injury. When running downhill, your strides are likely to be longer because you're running faster downhill than you would on hills or, or flat ground. Uh, not only are you running forwards, but you're also running down. So the impact on your body is actually greater um, each time your foot hits the floor. So try to continue to take those short steps, uh, keep erect, keep your nose over your toes and try to stay in control. It's really, running downhill is really hard on the quadriceps because your leg is flexed and therefore the quads kind of get that impact with each step. Uh, so slowing down will help kind of mitigate fatigue in your quadriceps. A couple things you can try um, if it's a steep hill is something that's called traversing. It's kind of like um, the novice skiers that weave from left to right, left to right to get down a steep hill. Kind of the same technique. Um, and also as you go downhill, kind of look about five feet ahead rather than 10 feet feet um, so that you can really plan your foot placement. Um, when going uphill, you wanna shorten your stride even more than usual. And this is the one time you wanna lean into the hill somewhat, um, kind of like a, a ski jumper. Uh, the picture on the slide is a great example of this. Uh, when you're, you're running uphill, it's important to pay attention to where you're landing. You don't wanna land on your toes. Um, again, you're going to tire out your calves. Um, you want to land on your entire foot. Uh, you can also try something called power hiking, uh, especially if it's long or steep and it's it's not running at all. Instead, you kind of lean into the heel. Um, you put a hand on each one of your thighs and you kind of power your way uphill with pure grit. Um, you really can climb uphill faster that way than people can run. Trail running is more complex than road running, so you really should prepare your body for the terrain. The goal is to improve reaction time and warm your muscles. Uh, the most common injury in trail running is an ankle sprain and abrasions. Uh, so it's important to have those proper running mechanics to kind of mitigate that. Research has also um, found that specific to trail running, if you complete a dynamic uh, warm-up uh, using a combination of flexibility exercises, strength and balance exercises, and plyometrics prior to running, it helps avoid injury. Um, and I'll show that uh, some, of, some of those examples on the next slide. It is important to, to mitigate injury. Um, so if you're running, uh, it's important if you suddenly have an increase in pain uh, during a run or you're, maybe you, ha you were a little bit achy, but it wasn't that big of a deal when you first started, but now the pain changed from achy to sharp that you need to stop running um, to mitigate that so that you're not going to injure yourself. Also, before you get started, if you are already sore and your pain is maybe a, a three out of a one to 10 scale, um, then you shouldn't go running. Um, that will again, create an issue for injury. Um, and then also if, Sometimes you'll have some soreness after a run. If your soreness lasts more than 24 hours, it means that you went too far and you pushed too much. So scale it back. And one of the reasons you don't want to run with pain is uh, because you kind of compensate is what it's called. It's when you are hurting somewhere you'll move or run differently. Like you'll limp a little bit, you'll hike up a hip to, to avoid 
um, like a painful movement. And so the general rule is no running unless you, no running with, a, if you notice that you have, you're compensating and don't run until that compensation kind of goes away. So these are the exercises that I mentioned. Uh, again, research has found that completing a dynamic warm up um, will help improve um, the reaction time and decrease your risk of injury. So doing that combination of flexibility exercises, strength and balance and plyometrics um, will avoid, will help with that. Um, these are some of the recommended exercises that will help warm up your muscles before you run. So in regards to the flexibility, there's a, a couple different things. And again, these are moving. You're trying to warm up your muscles by moving. That's that dynamic warm up. So doing your high knees, just alternating your knees um, over and over and over again, doing hip swings side to side, front to back. Um, are that flexibility portion. In regards to strength and balance, um, there's something called multi-segments. And on the picture, it shows um, a, a person kind of standing and then putting their knee on a ball. Instead of that, um, you can use like a rock or a railroad tie or anything that's kind of handy. Um, you can still achieve these strength and balance exercises. And then finally, plyometrics. Um, that's, again, the dynamic workout where you maybe squat with a jump and then squat and then jump and then squat and jump and then single leg hop back and forth. After you finish, um, cooling down is always a great idea after any run because it sends oxygen to the muscles and removes lactic acid which helps kind of make so that the soreness isn't so bad. Uh, I, I recommend following your run with just a short, like three minute walk and then doing a series of what's called static stretching. Now, static stretching is not like stretching and bouncing, okay? It's a stretch and hold and it's a stretch and hold for about 30 seconds. So it's important to breathe while you're doing your stretching and holding so that the oxygen gets where it needs to go. Um, some great stretches that are important to include would be calf stretches. Uh, so the, the picture shows kind of an example of stretching your calf. Um, forward fold gets the back of your legs. That's basically how you fold in half. Um, and then also doing a quad stretch. Um, some additional things that can help with kind of soreness are compression socks, uh, warm soaks or Epsom salt baths um, or massage. You can do self-massage. Actually, there's like rollers that you can kind of roll on top of it um, to do some self-massage as well. All right, we're wrapping things up. Uh, the final thing we're going to discuss is some tips and resources. Some tips that I have is enjoy yourself. Trail running is an excellent form of exercise but it's also a fantastic way to spend time outdoors. You can um, get on the trails for the pure enjoyment of moving your body amidst the nature. Uh, make sure that you stop as often as you want to. Again, we're not going from point A to point B as quickly as possible. You, you don't have to stop just to catch your breath. Uh, as a runner, it's easy to get wrapped up in those numbers again. Um, but by really allowing yourself to alter your mindset from numbers, uh, the experience you can truly begin to, you, your experience is so much better. You can really truly begin to love trail running. And then finally, bring your camera, um, bring your smartphone or a small camera. There's so much to see when you're on a trail that you may want to uh, capture a beautiful view. Trail running is fun and trail racing actually takes this enjoyment to a whole new level. Uh, research has actually shown that uh, trail uh, racing participants um, found an increase in um, relaxation, excitement, pride, gratitude, and virtue, and a decrease in anxiety, anger, boredom, guilt, 
shame and resentment after participating in a race. So it really kind of helps that mental um, mental health portion. Uh, many race organizers offer 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathons, and ultra marathons, just like they do with road runs. Um, here along the Wasatch Front, they actually have something called the Wasatch Trail Running Series. It takes place springs through summer on Wednesday evenings, um, twice a month. And it's on the dirt trails of open spaces and some of the local ski resorts. Uh, they have two courses. They have a short course that is three to five miles, and they have a long course, which is seven to nine miles. And each race will kind of conclude for a drawing um, for giveaways. And um, if you the more races you participate in, uh, the more points you'll actually um, earn. And at the end of the season, um, awards are given to those who um, have the highest ac uh, accumulation of the points. Um, and also it has a charitable um, component. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in um, a trail racing to look into the Wasatch Trail Run Series. And then finally, here's our resources. Uh, the American Trail Running Association, uh, you can find uh, trail races. You There's linked to articles, there's podcasts, there's a list of clubs that you can join. Um, they also have uh, an area to look for trails. There's another um, trail search uh, by going to the Trail Runner Project. Uh, it not only is online, but they actually have a free app. Um, and there is the um, web site you can go to. Um, and there's also all trails. This is uh, a way to locate trails that are closest to you. It will provide driving directions uh, to the trails and will include like community reviews of the trails. So this is a good way to know what kind of trail that you're going to be getting yourself into. Um, it has a free version, but it also has a uh, paid version. And if you if you um, pay the subscription, you can actually download the maps uh, and take them with you. And then the, uh, the last uh, resource is join a group. There's uh, many uh, Facebook groups on trail running. Um, it kind of connects you with people. And a lot of the local running shops also have events and um, groups that you can join. Here's my references. And I'm happy to take questions. We've had a few questions <clears throat> already, but if anyone has any other questions, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat while we cover this first few. Um, the first question I have is, uh, every person I know who is a trail runner has broken their arm doing it. I count 13 of them. Oh, Two of them both broke arms, both broke, broke both arms at the same time. How can this risk be minimized? Um, the research actually shows that the ankle sprain is the most common injury, but you can have fractures. And the reason that happens is it's a natural instinct when you are falling to put your hands out. Um, and so that's what's causing those fractures is they are, you know, falling and will put their both hands out or one hand out to catch their fall. Uh, so really the best, I don't know that you can try to do it, but if you ever get into the, the um, that you are falling, it would be best to kind of roll into the, the ground rather than put your arms out um, to try to break that fall. So um, sometimes that's easier said than done, but that's my best recommendation is, is um, instead of having the impact on one or two of your bones, if you have the impact on a larger surface of your body, then you're not, you're more likely not to, um, get as injured. Good question. Right. Uh, since you mentioned ankle sprains, uh, the next question I want to ask is would high top shoes prevent ankle sprains or, or rolling your ankle on the trail? Um, 
the because how you're running it's i don't the running shoes you need um be able to have a lot of movement um and the high top shoes are actually going to minimize your ability to move um and and you know be move around the trail um so that's why trail shoes are not do not have the high top um to them the trail shoes will actually are really low to the ground um and so it, think that high knees quick steps is what's going to get you over those different barriers what happens with the ankle sprains is that you're you know you step on a a log that then moves and then you fall or you uh get to a slippery rock or something like that and so it's those things that are going to um, cause those ankle sprains. And ultimately, if you're wearing the high tops, I can promise you as an ER nurse, I've seen many people with uh, high top hiking boots and they still can have fractures and they can still have sprains within those high tops. So, I mean, that's a good, that's a good thought, but I, it doesn't, it isn't backed by the research. Um, next question is, have you ever come across a snake or a dangerous animal while trail running? Um, I actually have not. Um, I, once when I was hiking, I came across a snake, but, um, again, I kind of mentioned being kind of noisy to some, some extent, um, they're going to shy away from you. They don't, they don't want to necessarily be involved with you just as light. The same as you don't want to necessarily be involved with them. So, um, especially with running, you're you're going to be making more noise along the trail than if you're perhaps just walking. And so, I haven't personally had uh, anything um, in that extent. But I also don't go uh, really mountainous. Um, I do more local trails and things like that. Um, but as I mentioned. Um, make I, I mean you don't want to be super loud but but just give space if you do come across some sort of uh, wildlife um the biggest thing you're going to see on the trails are horses and just give them the right away um mm -hmm. and really all wildlife just give them the right away back away let that let it that let it pass and then move on uh, the next question is kind of related, and that is, what wildlife are we more likely to encounter here in Utah, and uh, do they all need to be handled the same? Um, I would say yes, handle all wildlife the same, um, kind of what I've already mentioned. So um, it depends on what trails you're going. Um, you know, you have the potential for for um, you know, deer and for elk and for, um, you know, little small creatures, snakes um, in particular. Um, I mean, if you're really mountainous, you possibly could, you know, do a brown bear or like a, a cougar or something like that. Those are possible, um, but are definitely on the rare side. Um, and most of the trails that you're going to be looking up are going to give you that information um, and possibly say, you know, there's there's poisonous um, ivy in this location, just be aware. And so that's kind of where that research comes into play. Know where you're going, read all of the reviews and the the information on uh, on what kind of a trail it is, and then you'll be better prepared. Okay, good sounds good. I don't see. Any other questions? I'm scrolling back through the chat. Yep, those are all the questions we've had today. But thank you so much. This was a very interesting presentation. And uh, I hope it was helpful for everyone who came. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.